What you see are stunning landscapes of Norway. Incredible views which hide something special within them. They are the Atlantic raised bogs, and they are more important than you might think. Today, when climate change issues are higher than ever before, bogs are even more valuable as they store twice the amount of carbon than all of the world's forests. They are great water regulators. Like huge sponges, they are accumulating water during wet seasons and letting it run during dry seasons. The Atlantic raised bogs are unique in Europe and are mostly located in Norway, Ireland, and the United Kingdom. In Norway, pitons cover 13% of the country and are preserved in the best condition in the whole of Europe. About 85% of them are still able to accumulate peat, while the average value in Europe is only 50%, and in many countries it's even lower. Even though at first glance the Atlantic raised bogs may look bland, still and lifeless, there is actually much more going on if you take a closer look. They offer nutrient-poor, acidic and water-saturated conditions, markedly contributing to biodiversity and hosting unique flora and fauna. The Atlantic raised bogs contain several habitat-specific species of sphagnum mosses, including some rare ones which we need to take care of and study in more detail. In hammocks, the dry raised areas, there is the Sphagnum austini, a species red listed in Europe, which has the largest intact occurrences in Norway. Another interesting species is the Sphagnum biotic, that has been recently published as new to Europe. In hollows, that is in wet depressions, there is the Sphagnum medium and Sphagnum rubellum. Our Sphagnum experts, Shel Ivar Flodberg and Christian Hassel, professors from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology University Museum, are monitoring the occurrences of this interesting species in Norwegian bogs. So this, this mire is typical for this uh, Atlantic region in the way that you find this combination of hummocks and trees, pine trees. Uh, and uh, some mosaic between the hollows and the hummocks and the hummocks are dominated by this uh, region of the rare species. Mm -hmm. uh, as you see here, the, some of this ostini it, it has a quite grey colour yeah. uh, so it seems like it's dying so here? Yeah. yeah, it looks like that. It's not. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's uh, we are wondering what happens mm -hmm. when uh, uh, Ostini is uh, dying on these hammocks. Will some other species uh, come in or will it recolonize mm -hmm. the peat? Bogs may seem like species poor habitats. However, bogs that are rich in sphagnum mosses are like tropical forests supporting high diversity of some groups. One of the creatures living there are mites. Mites are small arachnids, measuring on average half a millimeter long. They are the most abundant and species-rich arthropod group in bogs. In one square meter of sphagnum mud, over 50,000 of mites and over 50 species can be found, including many species that are restricted only to bogs. For the first time, three mite groups, Mesostigmata, Trombidiformes and Sarcoptiformes, are thoroughly studied in peatlands. Study sites were six bogs, two in each of three regions, Western, Central and Northern Norway. In order to study mites, we collected sphagnum mosses. Shel Ivar Flatberg would find the target peat mosses. When the right sampling plot was selected, the vegetation was mapped and a sphagnum sample was collected. And I see, I see Rubus camemurus. Okay. I see, I see 
Have I said Andromeda? No. No, Andromeda again. Andromeda, Polyfolia, yeah. It's... Uh, and what is coming here? It's really nice, yeah, pursuits. You have a hole here. Can I see? A big hole. Yes, you see here the hole here? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's typical for Cladonia uncialis. Mm -hmm. And we have here Cladonia... Um, well, we are now far to the north, well, I take a shoot to ensure. Claudonia, uh, other. Oh, there are three short branches at the tips of each branch. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, Claudonia mitis. Mitis, noted. Which is the northern mountain Claudonia. Yes, I think that's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm very satisfied with the species list. So if the mites know also come here, then... Yes, yes. The mites are studied by Anna Sinichak, researcher from the University of Bergen University Museum. In addition, Anders Hulbeck, senior researcher from the Norwegian Institute for Water Research, collected water samples to study water properties and identify microcrustaceans living in water. Henriette Wagland from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology University Museum assisted in mapping of the vegetation. Stefan Roth from the University of Bergen University Museum gathered insects and spiders. Sphagnum samples were extracted in the laboratory using burlesque funnels. They use a light source to force the mice downward where they fall into a vial with ethanol. From a single sample of sphagnum moss that has a volume of half a liter, hundreds of mice can be extracted. So during the field work, we collected tens of thousands of them. Mite communities differ in bog microhabitats. In bog hammocks, terrestrial species dominate. One of them is the Zolnikochtonius cricoides, a species new to Norway, found in a bog in Trondelag. It is the smallest eribatid species known in Norway. Its body length is only around 150 micrometers. In wet microhabitats, aquatic species are abundant. For example, the Limnozeres chassi, which is a new species to science, also found in a bog in Trondelag. So far, more than 20 mite species new to Norway have been found, and several species new to science. This shows that the Atlantic raised bogs hide real biodiversity treasures and deserve our attention and protection.